Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. Today I offer a thousand dollar reward to the favorite healthcare charity of MSNBC's Ed Schultz to prove he is bearing false witness about Obamacare. Obamacare should really be called Obama sick because it causes cancer. And I debate Tom Hartman on homosexual sin. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps, you're watching PIJN News, and on this show we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Recently I appeared on the liberal TV network, MSNBC, for part two of my debate with Ed Schultz, the liberal commentator who repeatedly bears false witness by claiming that Obamacare has given health insurance to 30 million new people. But when I confront him on the show and offer him a thousand dollar reward if he can prove that statement, he reverses himself and he admits not only is Obamacare not given health insurance to 30 million people, actually Obamacare has taken health care away from 4.9 million working age Americans. Let's go to this video clip. In my opinion, there is no moral or religious case for taking health care away from 30 million Americans. And you know, we still have 20 more after that that we've got to take care of and give options to. Uh, one of my next guests will try to once again convince me otherwise. Uh, joining me now is our rapid response panel, John Fugel saying, and also Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. These two gentlemen were with me last week. It got so heated and so intense and so informative, we had to bring them back. So, John, you're going to get the first crack on this one tonight as we started with the pastor, uh, the, the chaplain last week first. We, you know, we have heard a lot about moral obligations this week. I mean, is it is there a moral obligation to see this law through now that the people and our government has passed it? Absolutely there is, Ed. And the three branches of government agree there's now a legal obligation to see this law through. And if people don't like Obamacare, I respect some of the folks on the left who would have rather seen single payer. I agree there's problems with it. The thing is so watered down, Dick Cheney could pour it on a guy's face in Gitmo. But the fact is that a lot of our moralizing friends are trying to repeal it don't understand. If you're afraid of the competition that it comes from exchanges or cheaper Canadian drugs or a public option, stop calling yourself a capitalist. And if, you're, if you don't care about 45,000 Americans dying every year because they are not insured, stop calling yourself a patriot. And if you don't want to have a part in healing the sick, find a new name for your religion. It's time to stop calling yourself a Christian. Jesus commanded his followers to heal the sick in Matthew 10, 7. In Luke 440, he healed more than could be counted. And don't forget, the Good Samaritan paid for an unknown immigrant's health care out of pocket. Dr. Chaps, uh, you've had a week now to come up with the answer. Please make the moral case for taking health care away from someone with a pre-existing conditions. And I, I just want to be very fair and clear about this. I'm not looking for any Republican economic talking points. I want a moral faith-based case for denying the poor and sick health care. Well, thank you again, Mr. Schultz, for inviting me on your show. My compliments to John. Uh, although you're a comedian, I can't see your sense of humor. Although I really wish I had your haircut. I'll give you that much. Thank I you, Chaplain. Uh, Happy New Year to you, too. <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, listen, I'm, uh, as a chaplain, I'm a member of the Knights Hospitallers. We invented the hospitals as Christians a thousand years ago, and my charity does care for orphans. We built an orphanage in India last year. We care for widows. We send, you know, health care money to poor widows in America. But I want to debate the false premise, Mr. Schultz, that you make that somehow Obamacare has given health care insurance to 30 million people. And that's just false. And I think you're the one bearing false witness here, and I'll tell you why. Here's a, a slide from the Gallup polling organization that shows that since January of 2009, since Mr. Obama took office, that 3% fewer working Americans between ages 25 and 64 have health care. So here are the stats. Yeah, some college-age people got more health care because now they're on their parents' policies, right? But you took health care away from more working families. Those numbers translate to this. 16.6% had health care when Obama was elected. 19.6% 
uh, excuse me, these are people without health care, now don't have health care. That's a 3% loss in health care, okay. which translates mm. to All right. uh, 4.9. Uh, uh, hang on, let me finish. No, 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 wait a minute. I got, I got your point on the stats. And I, and I, okay, now you have reversed this. You were asking me a question about why these people have lost their health care. Well, we did go through a thing called a recession, and we lost millions of jobs, and that, of course, affected people's health care and only 3%. So the comeback is very clear. 30 million more people will have access to the exchanges. But let's get back to my original question. I need you to make the moral case as to why a Christian would believe that it is the right thing to do to deny health care to someone after a country has voted for it. That, that's the moral, is it the moral position of a Christian to take health care away from people? Because that's what your party wants to do, sir. Well, on one hand, I agree with you. On the other hand, I disagree with you. Jesus did say, as John uh, quoted in, in Matthew 10, we should heal the sick. The part that I disagree with you is that Obamacare actually gives more insurance. Mr. Schultz, I'm going to offer a $1,000 reward today to the charity, health care charity Wait a minute, of you mean uh, uh, Obamacare gives more insurance? Obamacare makes it possible for people to get insurance. We're talking about a pre-existing condition, sir. We're, we're talking about... No. The, no, 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 we are. Very clear here. This is the linchpin of the entire uh, bill, is that people who are sick are not going to be denied. Mm -hmm. But your party wants to deny those people. And again, my question, what's the moral case there, sir? Well, the moral case is that you're living on fairy dust and empty promises because that hasn't happened yet. If it hasn't been implemented completely, stat. sir. It starts on October 1st where people can sign up for the oh, exchanges. If I may, if so I, if all I of may. a sudden... If, if All of I, a sudden, he admits it hasn't happened yet. No, it has. A no, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no. The full, it, uh, sir, the full implementation of the bill is going to provide 30 million more Americans health care coverage in this country. The pre-existing condition is a moral component that this country has made a decision that if you're sick, we're not going to deny you health care. Your party, I think, takes an immoral position in saying that we are going to vote to deny that. How is that Christian for the third time? Well, let's compare the numbers. In the last three years since Obama was elected, 4.9 million working Americans have lost it and zero have gained it. Okay. You say 30 may, million have gained it. You're bearing let's... false witness. I'll give you a $1,000 reward. These slides are on my website, PrayInJesusName.org. Okay. All right, John, I'll give you a response choice. to that. Yeah, look, here, here's the thing. These guys are going to keep on telling conservatives to blame Obama if you lose insurance. Blame Obama if your premiums go up. Just don't ever, ever blame your insurance company. It's folks who want to worship Jesus in their private life. Life, but they want government to worship the golden calf. And the worst nightmare our right-wing friends have, the people who were wrong about trickle-down economics, wrong about impeaching Clinton, wrong about Obama's citizenship, wrong about Iraqis greeting us as liberators. When the Republican voters find out that this president does care about their health and cares about their children's health and their parents' health, yeah, right. they're going to lose their last stranglehold on the gullibility of the Fox viewing demographic. All right, Dr. Really Chaps, I, I want to commend you for the volunteer work that you've done and the, charita Amen. And the charitable work that you have done. That is the correct moral position. But I think that you are on shaky ground when you align yourselves with a party that wants to take health care away from someone who was already sick and now being denied. That's the, the case in point of all of this. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us tonight. I appreciate Always your a time. Pleasure. Thank you both. When we come back, I'll explain why the Democrats are the ones who want to take health care insurance away from people. In fact, 4.9 million people. Also, it should be called Obama sick because Obamacare causes cancer. Fighting the culture war between church and state, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Are you pro-life? Do you believe that abortion kills innocent children? If so, I want you to take action today and sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's three petitions we need you to sign. The number one is to stop Planned Parenthood from getting your taxpayer dollars. Did you know they've received now $487 million in your taxpayer dollars? I don't think that's right. They use that money to facilitate 329,445 abortions, not really to pay for adoption or mammograms, but just to kill innocent children. Sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. Here's number two petition we want you to sign, and that's to defund Obamacare. This bad health care law is now forcing Christian employers 
to pay for contraception, sterilization, and abortion pills free of charge for all their employees. Or the Christian employer has to pay a hundred dollar fine per day per employee. That's going to bankrupt our friends like the Hobby Lobby Corporation, Christian business owners, and even Catholic hospitals now are being forced to pay for abortions. The Obama administration is now promoting the plan B abortion pill over the counter for children as young as seven years old. Here's petition number three we need you to sign at PrayInJesusName.org to help pass Senate Bill 583, the Life Begins at Conception Act. This personhood bill, introduced by my friend, Senator Rand Paul, can actually defend life and help overturn Roe versus Wade. Take action today. I know you care about the unborn, but please sign a petition today at PrayInJesusName.org. We will fax that petition free of charge to your congressman. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org. Take action today if you're pro-life. I'm Dr. Chaps. Does Obamacare cause cancer? Well, we're gonna show you some slides now. In fact, let's begin with the one I showed on the Ed Schultz Show from the Gallup poll, which shows that since President Obama took office, and also, by the way, since Obamacare was enacted as law, that millions more working class Americans have lost their health care insurance. Well, here are some slides that explain that. In January of 2009, 16.6% of working age Americans, 26 to 64, did not have health insurance. Now, 19.6%. So that's a difference of 3% of working class Americans have lost health care insurance or 4.9 million working Americans. Now, why? Let's take a moment and think about why this happened. Was it because of the recession? Is it Bush's fault? I got emails from MSNBC viewers saying, oh, it's Bush's fault. You know what? That was five years ago that the President Bush was not even the president anymore. But no, it's Obamacare's fault. And here's a specific reason why. Because they've already implemented Obamacare. Two out of the three phases. Yeah, the exchanges are coming up. But the part they've already implemented are to eliminate the catastrophic cap and to implement pre-existing conditions. And because those policies have already been forced on working class Americans, health insurance premiums have gone up. The president promised, oh, they'll drop by $2,500 a year. No, they've increased by $3,500 a year. When people can no longer afford their health care insurance, in fact, I got a letter from my company saying, oh, we're gonna add $100 per month to your premium because we gotta pay for these other rules of Obamacare. It makes it impossible for working class Americans to afford this health insurance. That's why we're offering the $1,000 reward. Here's it, repeat again. Mr. Schultz, take me up on this. 30 more, if you can prove that 30 more million Americans have already obtained health care insurance because of Obamacare, I'll give a $1,000 reward to your charity. But you're not gonna be able to do that because 4.9 million have lost them. In fact, I got an email this week from a lady who knows a friend who was dying of cancer. And here's my, we're gonna share this email, but here's my thesis. Obamacare causes cancer. Whenever you remove Obamacare and health insurance from 4.9 working age, 4.9 million Americans, it causes cancer because those people, since they can't afford their premiums, they drop their insurance, they can no longer get cancer treatment. Well, here's an example. This nice lady emailed to me. Come and visit my friend dying in the hospital from a cancer recurring and her health insurance ran out from the previous cancer treatment. In other words, they could no longer afford the premium, so they dropped their plan. She was in pain, but couldn't afford to go back for more treatment, so she suffered in silence until it had gone too far. Our local social services is trying to get her help. The government aid couldn't help her. It's too late. And yes, her husband works. This is one of those working class Americans that's not getting help from the government because of Obamacare. She says he's self-employed. Now they have two teenagers gonna lose their mother because they can't get health insurance. When the cancer came back, they have a pile of medical bills and a dead mother. Now, she makes the illogical leap. That's why we need more Obamacare. No, actually, Obamacare is the one that killed this poor lady with cancer. She dares me to come and lay my hands on her and heal her. You know what? I'd be happy to come and pray with you because Jesus is the healer. Jesus is God. The government will fail you when you worship that as God. Let's pray. Here's a scripture that I want to leave you with from Exodus chapter 15, and let's pray about this. Father, we pray for all of those sick people who are now being mistreated and abused by the Obamacare system. Father, that they, because they can no longer 
afford their health care premiums because of the Obamacare policy that forced that rise in insurance premium that they cannot get health insurance and therefore Obama sick causes cancer. Father, we rebuke that sickness and that cancer in Jesus' name. We command in Jesus' name by the power of God that people watching this show who are afflicted with those diseases would be healed in Jesus' name. They would look to Jesus Christ as the healer. Father, as you say in Exodus 15, and I'm going to read this scripture here. If we will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, he will put none of the diseases on us that he put on the Egyptians. For you, the Lord our God, are our healer. The government is not our healer or our God. Jesus, we look to you and the power of God. In Jesus' name, amen. When we come back, I'm going to debate Tom Hartman about homosexual sin. Making your voice heard in our nation's capital, Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do, but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies' room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. God bless you in Jesus' name. I recently also debated the liberal TV host Tom Hartman about the homosexual punishment now of Christian business owners who refuse to participate in gay weddings. Let's watch this video. But there are other things happening in the world. One of them, which I find is particularly interesting, is that while churches can discriminate, a Catholic church, for example, can say, no, we're not going to marry you here if you're not Catholic or or even if you are, but you were divorced, uh, we're not going to marry you. But businesses cannot discriminate based on certain criteria. They can't discriminate based on color. They can't discriminate based on religion. They can't discriminate based on gender identity, on, on whether somebody's gay or not, basically. And so recently there was a photography shop that refused to do a, a, a shoot for a gay marriage, and... They were sued and they lost the lawsuit because, hey, if you're in business, you've got to serve people. And uh, Chaplin and Dr. Gordon James Chaps Klingenschmidt, former Navy chaplain, defender of religious liberty and uh, fellow who runs the PrayInJesusName.org website, uh, thinks that he has come up with a way around that commercial injunction that you not discriminate. Do I have that right, doctor? Well, thank you so much, Tom, and God bless you, and God bless your viewers today. In Jesus' name, I'm happy to join you via Skype. 
I am familiar with the New Mexico Supreme Court ruling against Elaine and Jonathan Hegwenen, two Christian photographers that were fined and penalized for declining to participate in a homosexual wedding ceremony, which was against their religion. They have no problem taking photographs, but what they had a problem with was participating in the gay wedding ceremony, which was counter opposite to what the Bible teaches, that that is a sin, that God defines marriage and Jesus defines marriage in Matthew 19, is only valid between one man and one woman. And because they had a religious viewpoint and they didn't want to sin personally, they obeyed God and they disobeyed men. And for that, they were fined and punished by the New Mexico Supreme Court. Yeah, no, and and and, and we're all familiar with this. I mean, those of us old enough to remember, remember, uh, you know, down in the South, the people operating the lunch counters saying that they should not have to serve uh, people of color because that's the mark of Cain. And after all, the Bible tells you that you're supposed to drive people, you know, the, the descendants of Cain out from your midst. Uh, so uh, black people are not welcome at this lunch counter. And the government came in and said, no, you can't discriminate based on that. And they said, oh, but this is my religion. In fact, the Mormons officially said this is my religion right up until 1987. And the government said, no, you can't do that. So you think you've figured out a way around this. Do I have this right that you're going to print some nasty words on the back of the pictures that you're going to take? Well, let me just respond to what you just said. It's actually evangelical Christians who get, got rid of slavery in the 1800s here in America. Charles Finney led that movement. Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, of course. Martin Luther King was a Republican. And the people who uh, wanted No, he to was not, for the record. Now, Martin Luther King was not a Republican. It is different than race. I campaigned for Alan Keyes for president. I support non-discrimination in cases of race. There's no reason, not even a Christian reason in the Bible that I can find, uh, to discriminate against a person's race. But God himself discriminates against sexual immorality, which is a moral choice. Yeah, I'm it's not going to, you know, f f f respectfully, I, I don't think either one of us are going to get anywhere debating that right now. I, I, what I wanted to talk about, and you, I think you wanted to talk about, is that you think that you can get around the legal injunction against discrimination against gays by printing uh, worthy of death or words to that effect on the back of the pictures of people in a gay marriage, that, that this is what photographers should do. Am I correctly understanding your position? Just to clarify my position, there's a, my position, there's actually two ways to get around this problem. I think the first way is to enforce the Constitution. The First Amendment of the Constitution forbids the establishment of religion or the... No, I, I got all, but that's not going to happen, so to the pictures. Right, but I think the Supreme Court in New Mexico is now establishing a theocracy, and you must be opposed to that, right? They're establishing homosexuality as the government. So governor's what do you want to print on the back of the pictures? Well, I think a second way, if they refuse to... Uh, participate and enforce the First Amendment, and they refuse to strike down that gay theocracy in New Mexico, the second way is for the Christians to go along with the law. Say, okay, we will take your photographs, we'll go to the gay weddings, we may even, as ordered by the law, we'll participate in the gay weddings by taking good photographs of you, the, the homosexual couple, and to exercise our freedom of the press, on the back of our business cards or on the back of the photographs themselves, we'll simply print the Bible verse from Romans chapter 1 and verse 32, that they who commit such acts are worthy of death. And so you want to print worthy of death in the back of the pictures. How would this be different from somebody who hates uh, Jews, for example, or black people, um, you know, who have, or Christians for that matter? from hanging a sign in the front of their restaurant that says, uh, you know, uh, na former Navy chaplains are worthy of death. Under and underneath in smaller type, it says, all welcome here for lunch. Well, it's different because race and religion are not to be uh, discriminated against. The Bible doesn't punish those things, but sexual immorality is very clearly prohibited as a sin in the Bible, and it's a human choice that we make to contract with the devil. We don't hate the people. We hate the devil. There's a difference. So... People, the devil rules, and we want to love them by helping them get free of the devil in their... Okay, so, you know, yeah, I get it, that this is, this is all about religion for you, and, and obviously very selectively. I'm assuming 
that you're not suggesting that people who are wearing clothing made out of two different kinds of fabric should not be, you know, should, that their pictures should be marked worthy of death. Or people who eat shellfish. Yeah, the, people the, are often confused and they say, oh, well, Leviticus talks about shellfish. and It, yes, talks about, it does. You know, dietary laws. But you've never read the Bible in Acts chapter 15. In I the actually have read the Bible from cover to cover, from Genesis to, to Revelation four times. Because that clearly says Christians in the New Testament are not bound by the Old Testament laws except the ones against sexual morality. So sexual there, morality... There is no prohibition against homosexuality in the New Testament. Well, that's foolishness. Read uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. It says uh, homosexuality and homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. No, it does Read not. Acts chapter 15. It does not. Immorality you, is prohibited. You are, you are interpreting. You are not quoting. No, I'm quoting the NASB version of 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 9. It says homosexuality. You need to read that version, NASB, which is the most accurately academic version trusted by scholars today. And also, uh, but, repeatedly, Jesus... Okay, so we're so let's, let's even say that you're right, and I'm asserting categorically that you're not. But let's say that you're right. Because of a Bronze Age religion, because of a 2,000-year-old religion... We're supposed to trash our brothers and sisters who are different from us, and we're supposed to put worthy of death on the back of their pictures. That seems to me not only despicable, but something that Jesus would find despicable. How can you call yourself a Christian and suggest that? Chapter 17. Am I out of time here? Yeah, well, you, I was going to give you the last word. Go for it. I was going to say, say, Jesus said, if anyone offends a child, he should have a millstone hung around his neck and be thrown in the depths of the sea. So Jesus is against child molesters, and I think Jesus would support... We're not talking about child molesters. We're talking about people who want to get married. Okay, uh, Dr. Klingenschmidt, we're out of time. Thank you for being with us. Hang on just a second. Our thanks to Tom Hartman and the Tom Hartman Show. Uh, I want to encourage you with this closing scripture from Proverbs chapter 3. And... We need your donations to fight these battles, to debate MSNBC, to debate the liberals who want to rewrite the Bible and rewrite history. Good grief. Please donate today at our website, PrayInJesusName.org. The scripture says in Proverbs chapter 3, Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due, when it is within your power to do it. Let's do what we can to help the poor. God bless you in Jesus' name. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.